Hey y'all, get ready to add a bunch of stuff to your Netflix queue because it's that time of the month where we talk about all the best stuff Netflix is going to be adding in September 2024. Starting with the first, where they add stuff you're familiar with, and then we'll talk about all the new stuff they're adding throughout the month of September. Thanks to Magic Spoon for sponsoring another video. We'll talk more about them in a bit, but on the first, they're adding a handful of action movies like Zack Snyder's 300, a movie that's miles better than any of his Netflix original movies, probably because he used Frank Miller's graphic novel as storyboards for this movie, which worked out beautifully. They're also adding 310 to Yuma, easily one of my favorite westerns created in the 21st century so far. In fact, I'm going to be watching Horizon on Max this week, and I know it's going to give me an itch to watch something like 310 to Yuma again. I also just recently rewatched Jaws, easily one of my favorite movies of all time, and easily like one of the greatest movies ever made. It's so highly rewatchable. I'm actually not a big fan of the sequels. The second one's okay, but my God, that first one is just an absolute masterpiece of a summer popcorn movie. Yeah, they're all gonna die. Oh, yeah. And then some not so masterful summer popcorn movies include The Expendables uh, 1 through 3. I mean, it is fun to watch these guys go at it in their old age, but it does wear thin pretty quickly for me. There is a new Netflix original movie that's a little bit like Rambo inspired. We're gonna get to that very soon. For some 80s classics, they're adding Dragnet, which I think is a highly underrated comedy. This is before Tom Hanks was a real big star. He is absolutely hilarious in this movie. Anybody need some boots? And you do not have to know anything about the original show, Dragnet, to thoroughly enjoy this flick. It's just a classic 80s comedy. Same goes for Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Possibly one of the most classic 80s comedies. Speaking of Kevin Costner, they're adding Field of Dreams, one that's fairly slow paced and I'm not a big baseball guy, so I never really got into this one, even though I acknowledge it's, it's a solid kind of heartwarming flick. They're also adding Stand By Me, which in terms of Stephen King adaptations that are not supernatural, this is like the second best and it's right behind the Shawshank Redemption. But my favorite 80s movie that they're adding this month is Midnight Run. For me, it's one of the most rewatchable comedies from the 1980s. There's so many quotable lines in it. Robert De Niro and Charles Grodin are just absolutely amazing together in this road movie. In fact, as far as road movies from the 1980s go, I put Midnight Run right up there with trains, planes, and automobiles. For some somewhat romantic movies, they're adding Legends of the Fall. Aloha, which was a movie that got panned critically, I've never seen it, and then Along Came Polly, which is definitely like a formula-based rom-com, but it's a good one. You know, it's Ben Stiller and Jennifer Aniston. It's funny enough. What happened to you? Hey, Ruben, I'm in a situation here. We have to leave now. Well, no, can we stay a couple more minutes? But dude, no, this is serious. I just sharted. I don't know what that means. For the kids, they're adding Sonic the Hedgehog, which is a surprisingly good movie for, you know, a family movie. It's got a little bit of a Harry and the Hendersons thing going on, and Jim Carrey is fantastic. I mean, everybody loves Jim Carrey, but it's been a long time since he's done classic Jim Carrey, and that's what he's doing in the Sonic movies. But if I'm gonna pick one family movie this month, I'd go with Wallace and Gromit, Curse of the Were-Rabbit. Not only is the stop motion animation style just Beautiful and interesting to watch. These Wallace and Gromit movies from the Ardman Animation Group orchestrate action sequences and storytelling perfectly. Now this is not a strong recommendation for adults to watch by themselves, but if you need to watch something with the kids this month, it's hard to do much better than animated movies from Ardman or Pixar. I put them up on the same level. But on September 2nd, they're gonna have a live event on Netflix that's unlike any live event they've done before. Chestnut versus Kobayashi Unfinished Beef. They're gonna be eating hot dogs together live on Netflix. It's their first time to do it together in 15 years. If you've ever been a fan of the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest, I have a suspicion that the Netflix production is gonna be bigger, more over the top, and a lot more fun. But speaking of eating, I wanna give a quick thank you to people who have noticed down in the comments that I've been gaining quite a bit of weight over the past couple of years, but unlike a bear preparing for hibernation, I've actually been losing quite a bit of fat and gaining a lot of muscle, and I've been doing it with the help of today's sponsor, Magic Spoon, which is a delicious, high-protein treat that tastes just like cereal you remember from when you were a kid. 
Every bowl of Magic Spoon has only four to five grams of net carbs, but 13 to 14 grams of protein with zero sugar, and with only 140 calories per bowl, Magic Spoon has been my go-to late night treat for years now. It really helps me pack on that extra grams of protein at the end of the day, which is so key for gaining muscle at my age. Magic Spoon is also keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, and soy-free. Magic Spoon comes in a bunch of flavors. They've got frosted, they've got fruity, they've got cocoa, peanut butter, and more interesting flavors like cinnamon roll and birthday cake. They've also got these delicious treats that are just absolutely packed with protein. If you're not sure what to get, I recommend going for a variety pack, but for a limited time, my viewers can save $5 by using the link in the description or just going to magicspoon.com slash flick. And use my code flick to save that $5, but Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, they offer a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like Magic Spoon for any reason, you can return it for a full refund when you purchase it online. By the way, Magic Spoon might be available in your local grocery store as well. Again. Use my link and my code to save $5. It's a great deal on something that I enjoy a lot. But speaking of things I enjoy, let's get back to this Netflix list. On September 4th, the popular survival reality series Outlast returns for season two. But in terms of like ultimate survival, on the 5th, they're gonna be adding Apollo 13 Survival. This is actually a documentary about the Apollo 13 mission, focusing on all the trouble that NASA had trying to bring these guys home. Obviously the Ron Howard movie is excellent and explores all of this in great detail as well. And that movie holds up incredibly well, but this documentary should have even more details in it. And then on the fifth, they're adding an interesting new movie titled I Used To Be Funny. It's actually about a stand-up comedian struggling with PTSD, which I know doesn't sound funny at all. And the movie actually, even though it's probably got some decent humor in it, it does look like pretty high drama stuff. It honestly doesn't even sound like my type of thing, but Rachel Sennett stars in this, and I've loved her in everything she's been in so far. So I'm gonna at least check this one out to see what she's able to bring to the table. Well, you could start paying full rent again. Okay, well, I can't do that. It's obviously cool. I was just... Also on September 5th, they're adding The Perfect Couple, which is a limited series based on a best-selling book and actually stars Nicole Kidman and Liev Schreiber, who I haven't seen in anything since Ray Donovan, so I'm looking forward to that as well. I love both of them as actors. But on September 6th, Jeremy Saunier, the director of movies I love, like Blue Ruin and Green Room, returns with a new Netflix original titled Rebel Ridge. Now his last film was also a Netflix original titled We Hold the Dark, and while I did like that movie, I think it, it reached for some very lofty ideas and didn't quite nail them down, making the movie less than perfect. But Rebel Ridge looks like a return to form. You're following one guy facing off against some corrupt police in a small town, which has some Rambo vibes. In no way does this look like a ripoff or remake attempt of Rambo, but it does look like it wrestles with some similar themes. This guy knows how to direct a slow, taut thriller. I'm really looking forward to this one. It also features Don Johnson kind of as one of the villains, and he's another actor. I've loved him in everything I've seen him in in the past like 10 to 20 years. So this one for me is one of the more highly anticipated movies coming to Netflix this month. So I was thinking, what if we just walk away? Well, now you're starting to talk. I was like, nah. But on the 7th, it's hard to go wrong with Edge of Tomorrow. I think still one of the most underrated Tom Cruise movies released this century so far. And I get it. I mean, it's the plot of Groundhog Day in this sci-fi setting, but it works out incredibly well. The storytelling's fantastic. The visuals are over the top and amazing. And even though you're with him dropping into this same war zone over and over again, but the movie manages to keep it all fresh. There's constantly new ideas evolving in this movie, making it highly rewatchable. And that's before I even get to Emily Blunt. I think she's fantastic in this movie. I mean, yeah, I get it. I like her in everything, but this might be one of my favorite movies that she's in. On the 10th, Jack Whitehall returns with a new-ish show. It's actually titled 
Fatherhood with My Father. Netflix produced multiple seasons of Travels with My Father, where Jack Whitehall and his dad are going around the world. Now he's experiencing fatherhood alongside with his father. Should be funny, especially for people who love the travel show. For some more reality TV on the 11th, they're bringing back The Circle for season seven. This is not a show I've ever watched, but with seven seasons, it is one of Netflix's more popular and honestly more traditional reality shows. <laughs> But then on the 12th, they're adding Black Mass, which is a less than perfect movie that features a damn near perfect performance from Johnny Depp. He plays Whitey Bulger in this movie, and the movie itself does not have a strong story that carries all the way through. It's much more of a character study where the story is happening, but you're really following the Whitey Bulger character, and the camera is very focused on Johnny Depp's performance as Whitey Bulger, meaning you get a lot of elements and a lot of things that happened with this character, but it does not feel like a cohesive story, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but I think it holds this movie back from being really incredible because the makeup and the drama and the production value of Black Mass, all of that stuff is top notch. But if that's not your bag, on the 12th, they're adding something that I think will appeal to fans of The Hunger Games. It's titled Uglies. This takes place in a future where everyone is compelled to undergo this surgery that causes everyone to be beautiful and alike. It erases all differences and you follow a group of young people that seemingly decide to buck this system. This is targeted at a teen audience. Like I said, fans of the Hunger Games and futuristic teen stuff like that should find a lot to love with this one. I think my wife is probably gonna dig it a lot. But something that's even more for the ladies is Emily in Paris is returning for season four, part two, again, on the 12th. The 16th actually adds a 1980s movie from Studio Ghibli that I've never seen before and I thought I had seen them all. Grave of the Fireflies is from 1988 and it follows a young boy and his sister who is struggling to survive in Japan during World War II. It obviously has that stunning Studio Ghibli look, but the themes here actually sound fairly heavy for a Studio Ghibli movie. And even though Max currently has almost all of the Studio Ghibli movies, they don't have this one. So I will definitely be checking out as soon as it releases. I'm surprised I've never seen it. On the 17th, they're, they're trying this speaking to the dead crap again with a new twist, live from the other side with Tyler Henry. Apparently he's a new one of these guys that just pretends to be able to talk to dead people. Supposedly they're doing it with celebrities this time, which is I guess the hook to get people to watch. This stuff is just beyond a sham at this point. It's not even been debunked, it's been disproven just about every way imaginable. I find the whole thing actually really disgusting, if you can't tell. Look, what I do doesn't hurt anybody. I give people closure and help them cope with life. No, you give them false hope and a belief in something that isn't real. But I'm a psychic. No, dude, you're a douche. I'm not a douche. What if I really believe dead people talk to me? then you're a stupid douche. September 19th adds Twilight of the Gods, which is a new adult animation show that has some involvement from Zack Snyder. I'm not actually sure how much. But it's a Nordic adult animation thing, so if you like adult animation and, you know, you're done with Vikings, then this could be a good thing to jump over to. Also on the 19th, the creators of Dahmer return with a new limited series about the Menendez brothers. This stars Javier Bardem, and there is a slim chance that this is not going to be the most talked about thing on Netflix in September. And then on the 29th, they're adding a drama movie that is also gonna be released in theaters much earlier in the month of September. It's titled His Three Daughters. And it's actually got an incredible cast with Natasha Lyonne, Elizabeth Olsen, and Carrie Coon. They're three sisters, their father is ailing and they need to take care of him and repair their relationship. High drama stuff, if that's your type of thing, then this looks like a legit good drama. Uh, my only real interest here is the cast. I think those three ladies are not only fantastic, but I'm interested to see what their dynamic is like together on screen. 
And then I'm predicting sometime at the end of the month they're going to be adding the new Garfield movie with the voice of Chris Pratt. It's on schedule. It's definitely something they're adding. But Netflix, the last year or so, they really enjoy holding back sort of a big budget theatrical release for late in the month. And they drop it kind of on a random Friday. So look forward to that later in the month if you've got kids. But here is everything leaving Netflix in the month of September. Uh, just pause the screen if you need more time. But I have listed a few titles here in bold. These are movies I've recommended pretty strongly in more recent episodes. By the way, if you want to watch some recent episodes or click the subscribe button, I'll make sure you never run out of good movies to watch again. Thanks again to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check out their link in the description, but I will keep making these episodes as long as y'all keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special Netflix episode, and you will see me on the next one. Here he is, the biggest douche of the universe. In all the galaxies, there's no bigger douche than you.